Oh My God Season 15 is finally the next Doctor Who The Collection a Blu-ray release. In December 2020, I made a video called What's Next for the Doctor Who Collection range. And my number one box set that I wanted to see was Season 15. Here's what I said back then. This isn't a perfect season. There's, there's one story that stands out like a sore sonic screwdriver. But nevertheless, there's so much stuff in there and, and I think some underrated stories. As you might be able to tell, since then I've got a new camera, new lights, new microphone, all bought and paid for by my Patreon supporters. So thank you so much to you all. Anyway, on this occasion, I did not know about this set's announcement in advance and I'm a bit under the weather. I don't quite have the energy to do a full on every single detail video, but what I can do is tell you the 10 things that I'm most excited about. How'd you like them apples? Hmm? So obviously the first thing I'm excited about is the season itself. This was 1977, the same year that Star Wars came out, and while Doctor Who clearly couldn't compete with that movie in terms of budget or special effects, it caught my imagination in such a way. I was so engaged with Doctor Who during this period. This was kind of my maximum engagement period with Doctor Who. And the season starts with an absolute banger of a trilogy in Horror of Fang Rock, The Invisible Enemy, and Image of the Fendal. For my money, those are three of the most scary Doctor Who serials you'll ever see. The appeal of season 15 does become a tad more selective with Underworld and The Sunmakers. And I must admit, I haven't watched The Sunmakers since transmission in uh, 1977, so I'm looking forward to catching up with that one. I have a lot of love for Underworld, though, and for some reason, it's a serial that is one of my top 10 go-to serials when I come home after a couple of ales. <laughs> I don't know why Underworld, or actually The Invisible Enemy, or The Leisure Hive tend to go on after a couple of ales. I should make a video about that, shouldn't I? Best Doctor Who serials to watch after a couple of ales. Anyway, the season climaxes with the invasion of time, six parts of just glory. As far as I'm concerned, I know a lot of people really do not rate The Invasion of Time, but for me it's inextricably just in my DNA. It's just joy, you know. And... Well, we'll get to that in a minute. We're going to talk about the, the artwork and the cogs. The cogs, the imagery, the Sontarans, the Vardens, everything about the Invasion of Time is just, you know, glorious Doctor Who for me. And the cover of this Blu-ray set really reflects and celebrates the majesty of season 15. Let's take a look at Lee Binding's artwork. And yes, this is exciting thing number two. First of all, obviously, as an Invasion of Time fan, I love the cogs. I think that's just genius set decoration on Gallifrey with the cogs. You know, it's kind of a subtle um, way to present time, isn't it? I mean, imagine if someone else had come in there and just put a load of clocks on the wall. How corny would that have been? But cogs is much better and I'm so glad that Lee has really seized upon these cogs in this artwork and a great picture of Tom Baker and floating jelly babies how brilliant yeah I love it I absolutely love it and I'm gonna have my first close look at the monsters as regular viewers will know my favorite bit of any of these covers is the little parade the little monster collage in the middle the carnival of monsters if you will and i love that the fendal and a possessed thea are standing right at the back kind of you know overarching everything i think that's great a sontaran at the front thank you very much and the nucleus of the swarm has nice prominence considering how much undue criticism the nucleus of the swarm gets i think it's great to see see him nicely up front there and because I haven't seen the Sunmakers in so long, I can't remember the name of the uh, the tax collector man there. And in fact, I can't remember the name of the Underworld hooded character either, but I do know that he looks really cool. Now, here's an interesting thing. In a minute, we'll get to the new optional special effects for Horror of Fang Rock. But Lee has included the new version of the Rutan here on the cover. And I can kind of understand why he's done it. I bet there's a story here where he really tried to use the original Rutan and just none of the imagery would work. I can imagine how it might not work, even though I'm not really a designer, apart from designing thumbnails to try and entice people to watch YouTube videos. <laughs> I think that looks pretty cool. I like, uh, I'm, I mean, it's going to take a bit of adjustment to the idea of a Rutan kind of walking on legs like this uh, with an eye, a single eye. Hmm. I might end up preferring the Rutan as a kind of amorphous mass. What a great cover. Yeah, that is a majorly exciting thing. As is the trailer for this uh, box set. What a trailer. I mean, this is surely the most ambitious 
uh, trailer with the with the biggest scope that we've had yet. When you think about how kind of relatively small scale the trailers for these sets used to be, you know, Colin Baker in a in a in a courtroom, which was still fun, but this is like special effects city. Leela the grown-up warrior queen standing and watching the destruction of Gallifrey and having a scrap with a load of Daleks. Brilliant. That's absolutely great. And uh, Louise Jameson is fantastic in this trailer. If you haven't watched it yet, I'm sure you have, but I'll put a link downstairs in the video description. Well done to Pete McTeague for writing and directing this. It's brilliant. Exciting thing number four is a lovely interview, I'm sure, with Louise Jameson by uh, Matthew Sweet. These interviews are always great to watch, and it'll be really interesting to see Louise chatting about this era of her career and the show. I had the pleasure of interviewing her and Tom Baker together many, many years ago now well probably about eight years ago i guess for doctor who magazine that was fun exciting thing number five is that tom baker is interviewed as well loving that always great to see tom being interviewed and it looks like he's got a few interesting things to say about the graham williams era i'm very lucky that i wasn't fired by graham exciting thing number seven is that there is a documentary about the producer graham williams now that's going to be really interesting i think and it looks like it's full of some pretty sort of frank recollections graham sort of <laughs> appeared in my office and said oh i'm taking over now so it was a bit of a surprise yeah i'm a big fan of graham williams because he uh he co-wrote the invasion of time for a start and uh produced some really great stuff i never quite figured out exactly what went on there and the politics behind all of that so that's uh, a doc that i'm really looking forward to seeing how about you let me know down in comments as with all this stuff and by the way if you haven't subscribed yet for more classic doctor who ramblings then hit that subscribe button right now to be honest i think i've got the numbers of the exciting things a bit mixed up so just let's forget the numbers uh behind the Sofa is back, obviously, with a, with a new episodes in which people watch stuff Gogglebox style and react to them. Let's see who's in this. I mean, it's a great lineup. Louise Jameson, Colin Baker, Thera Sutton, Janet Fielding, Matthew Waterhouse, Katie Manning, uh, Betsan Roberts, who is the, the wife of director Pennant Roberts, and comedian and presenter and all-round lovely fella Toby Hado. Yeah, looking forward to that. We also have exclusive audio commentaries from Tom Baker, and that's a pretty big deal, I think. It's nice to capture Tom's thoughts on these serials. It doesn't say in the, in the press release exactly which stories he's done audio commentaries for, but the fact that there's more than one, that's, uh, that's good enough for me. And it's going to be very amusing, as always, listening to him watching these serials as if he's watching them for the first First time which in some cases he probably is <laughs> now i've saved two of the most exciting things for last because they both relate to one of my favorite ever doctor who serials horror of fang rock it does seem that the special features on the face of it are very much slanted towards horror of fang rock and i would have preferred I don't know, it's hard to say. I mean, basically, as fans, we want everything, don't we? I don't know how the distribution of special features is worked out. It's obviously going to be based on budget, for a start, and it's also possibly going to be dictated by the enthusiasm among the team for certain stories. I don't know. That's how I would presume it would work. Horror of Fang Rock is a worthy story, to say the least, um, to have lots of attention lavished over it. So what is happening here? We have a uh, making of which is exciting because I'm, I was kind of shocked. I, I just assumed there was a making of already on this, uh, this old Horror of Fang Rock DVD, but no, there isn't. So this making of is called Inside the Lighthouse, and it seems to feature Toby Haydock taking Louise Jameson back to the, uh, the lighthouse where this serial was filmed. So that's really exciting. Yeah, I'm really thrilled about having a making of for uh, Fang Rock. Lastly, then, we come to the Horror of Fang Rock optional new special effects. This is really exciting. Generally speaking, I tend to love seeing new effects in uh, classic Doctor Who DVDs or Blu-rays, whatever. I love having them as an option, but nine times out of ten, I will watch the old ones. Actually, it depends. It depends how strong the nostalgic link that I have to the story or the moment or the special effect is. You know, in, in The Invisible Enemy... I was just too attached to the sort of the weird crackly lightning that, that comes between people as they get possessed and between spaceships and all that stuff that's happening. Um, I just did not really want to... I wanted to see an optional new special effect, but when enjoying the story, when push comes to shove, I would choose the old effect. Having said that, these effects look really good. I think we see three excerpts in the, in the trailer for the box set 
for these new Fang Rock effects. And they look really good. Uh, the one of Ruben, the lighthouse keeper, sort of changing into a Rutan looks really nice. Looks like he's sort of opening out from the middle. That looks nice to become a Rutan. And I kind of mentioned the, the new look of the Rutan earlier. I'm not 100% sure about it, if I'm perfectly honest. I'm still kind of processing it. Because it's a strange thing, isn't it? You have an alien that has been in your mind, in your memory, and on your screen for the best part of, what is it? 45 years? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. And then, you know, a new kind of reimagining of that alien is presented to you. That That's going to take more than, you know, a couple of hours to kind of figure out how you feel about it. And of course, I probably won't know until I see what it looks like on screen and how it all fits together. But I'm excited about it. It also looked like there's a nice kind of effect of the ship that looks like it's about to be shipwrecked. So that's nice. Better kind of, better kind of ship, shipping effects. Lovely. I really love that the cliffhanger of episode one of uh, Fang Rock is like a ship running aground onto the island. Anyway, I should probably save that for the video that I've been threatening to make for probably years now, you know, 10 things to love about Horror of Fang Rock. Actually, I could really do that for every, well, pretty much every single story on this box set. And feel free to encourage me by hitting like on this video and telling me in comments that you'd like to see more in-depth videos about the serials on this set. And if you really want to go the extra mile in encouraging me, then become a channel member. But it's certainly not compulsory and this stuff will always be free. Now, before you go, let me remind you about the last live stream I did in which lots of viewers and I decided to try and predict what the next... 12 Doctor Who the Collection box sets were going to be. We laid them all out by the end of the live stream. I'll put a link on screen in a minute. But let me remind you about what our first choice was for the next box set. Don't you love a good consensus? There. Yes, we nailed it. We nailed it. Now, I'll put that, that live stream there if you want to watch that. And here you can see my What's Next video from a few years ago in which I go into depth on my thoughts on season 15. I hope to bring you more depth on this box set and I'd like to do a live stream. Let me know in comments if you'd like to see that. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry I'm a bit under the weather and a bit croaky. But don't forget, for God's sake, to embrace your obsession.